So yeah, my name's Chris Book. I work at Distamo in developer relations. So it's my job to get as many publishers and developers to use our free products as possible. Um, and I'm a technologist. And uh, I've been working around apps for about 10 years, I guess. And uh, I've never really been involved in, in games at all. So as a technologist with no experience of games, I'm here to talk to you about a marketing topic around mobile games. So let's see how it goes. I've kind of expanded the topic to say uncovering yours, but also your competitors' needs and uh, desires. So what does that mean? I'm going to be looking very analytically about uh, what you can do to investigate data, public data, uh, around other people's apps and benchmark it against your own. Before I do that, though, I'm just going to run through a very quick introduction to Distamo. How many people here already know about Distamo, know everything that we do? Fantastic. How many of you managed to get into the party last night? OK. And you're still awake. You're still feeling good. OK. So there's a lot of data in the presentation. I'm going to go through it really fast. Put your hands up if I'm going too fast, and I need to slow down in terms of uh, you know, speaking very fast in English. What Distamo does, it provides uh, three products. Uh, app analytics. So if you have a game, you publish a game, uh, and you want to know your downloads and your revenues and your reviews and your ratings over time, you don't want to handle iTunes Connect and Google Play and the Amazon Store data. You want it all in one aggregated place, then this is the thing for you. It's completely free. We also offer conversion tracking, which again is completely free, so you can check uh, campaigns and lifetime value. All of the data we provide is available through an API. And then we have a paid product, which is called AppIQ. Uh, which is where you can go and see competitor estimates of their downloads and their revenues. And I'll explain a bit more about that because the, the, the sort of data that I'm going to show later in the presentation is based on some of that information. So I'll explain some more. First of all, I just want to quickly give you a couple of minutes on some market stats from 2013. This is total revenue from Google Play and from the Apple Store. Uh, and you can see which countries dominate in terms of revenue. So the US is still way ahead being caught up fast by Japan and South Korea. Um, and the rest of, of the countries are kind of dwarfed, really, by the US opportunity. But what's interesting to look at is the change in revenue between 2012 and 2013. You can see that Asia is where the growth is coming from. So South Korea and Japan growing very fast. And that China number is just based on iOS, because we don't have Google Play in China. Um, so it's very difficult to understand what the Android market is there. Uh, so that's purely an iOS growth number. So Again, interesting to see this change in terms of the 2012 revenues to total 2013. Another market stat is the, the market share. So we update this each month, and that will show you, based on the, the markets where we have good estimate data um, for iOS and for Google Play, that Google Play is catching up. So I was saying for years and years and years, it's not worth investing in Google Play yet. Uh, there's not enough revenue there. People on Android, they don't want to pay for your games. They don't want to pay for your apps. It's no longer true. It's catching up. And in certain markets, it's overtaken. So in Spain, for uh, apps like Simpsons, Tapped Out, and Top 11, the revenue from Google Play dwarfed uh, iOS in a six-month period. So significantly, you know, statistically significant period of time, Google Play is outperforming. But it kind of mainly is Spain. So in countries where Google Play have integrated to the operator app stores for billing, and where Android is massively dominant, like in uh, South Korea with Samsung's dominance there, you see this trend. But as, a, as the previous slide showed, this is changing. So it's something to consider about maybe which platform you go for first. Will it ever change away from iOS first and, and Android second? So because we're talking at a casual games conference, uh, really wanted to focus in on some business model stuff and, and how freemium has become the thing. I know you've heard this loads, not just at this conference, at every single conference for the last 12 months. Uh, but I wanted to show some data to back it up. So on iOS, through January to November last year, it went from 77% of applications that were free to play and monetized through in-app purchase up to 92% by November. And on Google Play, it's even more marked. So it went from 89% freemium to 99%. Does that say 99 or 98? I can't read it. 98, I think. Um, so you know, it's 98% of all revenue in the markets that we track in the ranked applications come from a freemium business model. 
And I know you guys are all games people, but this shows how that business model varies across different categories on the App Store. So games overall, and then the other categories, the other genres of apps, they have different business models, right? But games is by far, in a way, kind of leading that drive towards freemium. OK, enough of, the, enough of the market overview. How do you understand what your customers want and what they're willing to pay for, I guess? That's kind of what I mean by needs and desires, is actually what are they willing to give you hand over cash for. That's what we're doing it for. I'm completely and entirely focused on the freemium model. So I'm not talking about paid apps. I'm not talking about premium games that have spent two years in development and you're charging $10 for. I'm talking about free casual gaming. So I've come up with something. I only joined Distamo two months ago. I've been looking at the data going, hmm, that's interesting. You know, what, what can I tell developers about it? What can I do from a bit more of a marketing point of view? We've got the most fantastic data people. We're based in Utrecht, which is just outside Amsterdam. We have machine learning guys, statisticians there. They're looking at this data all the time. But they're kind of looking at the numbers. And I'm thinking, hmm, I'm an entrepreneur. What does that mean for me? So I've come up with this thing called the D factor. So it's a bit like the X factor, but for, for games, yeah? What you do is we provide these leaderboards. So this is all publicly accessible information. So everything you can see down here is, is the rankings. If it's for one particular day, then this will match the rankings that you see in Google Play or on iOS. What you don't see over the, on this side of the screen is download estimates and revenue estimates. So what I've done is I've looked at average revenue per install. So there's lots of talk about average revenue per install all the time. Uh, I'm sure you've heard many talks today and yesterday and more tomorrow talking about uh, how to increase that and uh, you know, different techniques you can use to kind of drive the maximum amount of money that you can get out of your customers. In fact, the, the, the previous presentation before was talking about that. Um, but you know, what does that mean? So for me, I took our estimated number of downloads across the top 1,000 applications in the world by download, so free applications ranked by the number of installs they got in Q4. And I divided that by our uh, So I took the, rev the total revenues for those applications and divided it by the um, number of downloads for each application. And I coined this phrase the D factor. And what I wanted to do was remove all the applications that had a D factor of less than one. So that means for each install, they had less than $1 revenue. So I took out a lot of noise. Now, there's a significant number of very, very successful, very happy people running those applications. But I wanted to try and get through the data and find some interesting stuff. And what I suggest you do is if you can get hold of this data, um, is study them. Get the application, install it, have a, have a look around. How are they monetizing? How are they engaging? Are they targeting people for sharing to get more installs? Are they then finding the people, what do we call them, whales? I've never heard that before. So whales and dolphins, right? So how are they communicating to whales and dolphins um, and, and study them? And then obviously use some of those techniques in your own app, check your analytics, do your A-B testing, and keep iterating. We just released a new feature in the leaderboards that allows us to aggregate all countries. So by that, I mean uh, you can actually have a sum in any time period, uh, in any category, and see the data for all countries. So for me, this first graph I'm going to show you was based on you know, every data point around the world. So I took out all the, the, the low people here. And as I said, that doesn't mean they're unsuccessful. It just means that the, the ratio between installs and revenue was lower than $1 per install. Um, and I thought, well, that's quite interesting. I thought that there would be a, a bigger number of dots here, and it would go down like that. Now, if I took the top grossing charts and did that, that's exactly what that would look like. But because I took the freemium you know, based on downloads, it, you can see that all the way down the top 1,000 applications, there are many applications that are getting more than $10, more than $6 per install on average. Now, there's something to be aware of. I took a quarter's worth of data, so three months' worth of data, and obviously people who uh, have long engagement time, Simpsons tapped out as an example, they're getting revenue from people that have had that application installed on their phone for a year or more. Um, and this doesn't take that into account. This is purely looking at a three month period where you know, the number of installs divided by the revenue, or the revenue divided by the number of installs. Okay, so where did I go next? I wanted to find out who this was, this one outlier here. Uh, so you can see it's a, a Kabam title where the average uh, revenue per install was around $17. 
And again, it's one of those games that people play for a long time, so you can't really measure that uh, in, in, in a snapshot period. But the reason, the, the methodology, the reason why I wanted to do that was there is a lot of talk about average revenue per install, average revenue per user. I don't think this de-factor is exactly that. So if you're measuring that for your own games, then you're going to use other things like conversion tracking tools, not App Store data. You know, you're going to go in there and you know, subdivide your, your conversion funnels into, into different sources of information and come up with average revenue per user based on that. But the problem with that is that you can't compare yourselves against anybody else. So with this data, I wanted to remove any individual, any single games company uh, information from that so that I could to, to do that sort of slice and dice that I did on the previous screen. And, and, and clearly, there are plenty of tools out there that will allow you to do that level of uh, measurement yourself. But I really wanted to be able to set a benchmark. So what did I do next? I dived into a particular category and a, and a, and a particular country. So I chose you know, the United Kingdom, where I'm based. Uh, and I started to look at three different categories. And I'll just go through them really quickly and just highlight the differences. So this is the top five in quarter four 2013 by downloads, by installs, so in the free category. And as you can see, when you divide the number of installs they had in those, that three-month period into the revenue, then you know, they're monetizing at 26 cents, 19 cents, uh, one cent, one and a half cents. You know, so, but then you see Simpsons tapped out. And you think, well, they're getting six and a half dollars per install out of their guys that are playing their games. And this is the thing, just to, just to make sure that we're looking at the right data, um, when I go to the next slide, which is the top five as ranked by their D number, uh, their D factor, then you know, keep an eye on this number because it changed significantly. I don't want you to think that you know, applications that are up here aren't being successful. You know that they are already. Uh, it's good to be in the top of the charts. But what I'm trying to say is there's gold further down the, the, the rankings too. So keep an eye on the totals, because it does, it does vary. So again, in Adventure, I then took the, uh, the top five applications by this, this de factor that I completely made up. You know. um, and I also show their, their ranking in that top uh, in, in Games Adventure in the United Kingdom. So if you just purely ranked it by the App Store, um, this, this is where they were. So down in 377 position is Shipwreck. But for each of those installs that it got, Bear in mind that that's a much smaller number than the top five by downloads, obviously. It's getting $10 per user. Again, just racing through a couple more examples. So I then looked at Word Games. And again, these two, Scrabble Free and Word Scramble, are using an old business model. So they're giving away their games for free and then trying to upsell a paid, a premium application on the back of their, those installs. So that's not freemium. That's you know, using the free game to try and cross-sell and get downloads in a separate category. So that's why they have a zero figure, because they've got absolutely no revenue coming from app stores. Now, of course, there's other ways of getting revenue as well. You know, display advertising uh, you know, is, is a way to do that. And we wouldn't see that in this basis. So I'm purely looking at apps and games that are trying to convert people with uh, in-app purchase. So the difference, when you then rank it by the D factor, we don't see 10s or 11s or 6s here. In the word category, you're lucky to get $1.70, uh, $1.20 out of uh, a, a really well monetized word game in the United Kingdom on iOS. And the last category I looked at was trivia. I'm particularly fascinated by Quiz Up, playing it all the time, playing it with lots of family members. Um, so obviously, really, really successful. There's a lot of hype. There's a lot of people talking about it on Facebook and Twitter. Uh, but it's getting one, uh, one cent per user. Their monetization, you know, maybe that's not what they're after. I don't know what their business, you know, their business plan is. Uh, but when you compare that to some of the other games in, in some of the other categories, role playing, et cetera, uh, it's very, very small. I'm guessing they're not spending much money on uh, cost per install advertising. And then you compare the, the ones ranked by uh, the top of the, the D factor. Again, slightly bigger than Word category, and they're, and they're monetizing successfully over that. OK, I just wanted to spend a bit of time. You have been to loads of presentations, right? And loads of people are talking about how do you get more money out of your customers? How do you get engagement with your base? And I just wanted to rifle through a few uh, of those outliers that were at the top of the graph in Worldwide. Um, and so I looked, at, I looked, I was fascinated. I hadn't ever played Simpsons 
tapped out. My son, who's 16, he, he played it for ages and ages and ages. Uh, I don't think he spent any money with it. Um, but I was trying to think, well, how are they, are they really getting people spending 70 pounds to accelerate their life in this virtual world, being Homer Simpson and Lisa Simpson? Um, and clearly they are, because they're, they're, very, uh, they're doing very well financially, thank you very much. You look at the top grossing charts, and this is always up there in every country. Again, another example, Modern War. Uh, very similar, very similar structure in terms of pricing. I thought they were from the same publisher. Uh, not sure that they are when I looked, but uh, you know, they're kind of offering a similar kind of, let's speed up my life in this game. Slot machines, gambling. You know, again, offering in-app purchases at this sort of level and really trying to push it. If you, if you cancel, if you press the cancel button, wherever that is, you get one of these. No, 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 don't go. Please pay. And they're trying to understand where, you know, how they can extract that cash. And of course, always trying to get some sort of uh, virality going across their games. Always trying to get other people to install without them having to pay for a, pay for a user. Again, final example, and then I'm going to cut right to the end. Uh, really like the things that, that uh, Mac have been doing in terms of getting people acquired uh, and, and, and getting people talking about it. So, you know, if you really want to understand what people are willing to pay for, if you really want to understand uh, what extra features they want, then talk to them because, sure as anything, they're going to be talking about their, them playing your game. You, you know, you can engage with them. I think we talked a lot about A-B testing and community management just in the presentation before. So. Um, and again, get people engaged. Have a beta release if you can, say on Android. Get, uh, the guys at Creative said they had 50,000 people playing this game before it was launched. So that's a great opportunity to ask them those questions before you launch. How would you pay? Would you pay for an increased dashboard or whatever it is in your game? And you know your game is better than anyone else. You know what your community are after. Final thing, um, we are going to focus on the monetization thing. We're going to focus on uh, free to play. And we are going to deep dive into this kind of, uh, we did a report in March 2013. We're going to go through that again and really look at revenue per download. And we're also going to include in the mix uh, some CPI data from Chartboost to really understand what that, the combination. Obviously, if you're looking at average revenue per install um, and you're uh, getting $10, then you can pay a certain amount to acquire those guys. If you're getting $1 cents, then you're not going to be paying to acquire customers. Um, so we're going to do a big deep dive, but that's not available until the start of Mobile World Congress week on the 20th of February. So that was it. Thank you very much. Any questions? So uh, I, I like the uh, concept of D factor and being able to see what's going on in a category or how you're doing against your neighbors, why didn't you? I guess my only question is, why didn't you call it the book factor? <laughs> uh, well, you know, D for Distimo. We're a team. OK. Uh, audience, do we have any questions for the person who has all the data? <laughs> Hi. Um, thanks for um, the nice graphs. I have a question, actually, um, about uh, 2014. Um, in terms of uh, revenue from the App Store and Google Play, um, how does that relate to 2013 and maybe 2012? Um, so there, there was a graph here uh, which shows the sort of total revenue of both. Obviously, it doesn't have a, a figure on the left-hand side here. Uh, so we produced a report back in mid-January, which you can download from distnoid.com. Um, and it has a, a review of 2013 and some predictions for 2014 too. Uh, it continues to grow. Something I should have pointed out when I presented this earlier is that for the first time, revenue, total revenue in January across both stores went up from the December figure. So in all previous years, December has been a spike driven by the Christmas holidays, and then January has been lower. But for the first time, it's continued, which is obviously a good sign that people have, you know, with new devices have continued to engage and spend. Um, without knowing what these figures are, are here, you know, you can see it's a clear trend upwards. Um, and, I, you know, I can't see any reason why that's going to top out. Uh, new, new markets. So this is globally, obviously. So new markets coming on board. We're collecting more data from those markets as, we, you know, as it becomes more st uh, statistically significant. Um, 
I don't know, I'm not going to make a prediction about what the total revenue is across both, um, but you can see that it's increasing, and you can also see that you know, Google Play's revenues are, in, are increasing in comparison to iOS as well. Any others? How do you think um, the UK's OFT um, stuff is going to affect the monetization? Uh, it's a good question. So um, the Office of Fair Trading, which is a UK body that looks at window salesmen that may kind of have bad practices, have looked at app stores and looked at how, uh, especially children, when you hand your device over to one of your ch children and there's in-app purchases, um, has looked at whether they fit within the law or, or whether there should be stronger regulation of that. Uh, because there's a lot of public complaints about children racking up thousand dollar bills or you know just spending money that wasn't kind of you know because the password was already logged in um, I don't I think most of those big companies and I think there was a lot of um, discussion between the UK government and those game developers as well are compliant to the to the rules that have been set out you don't think so no, I think that, that's, so that's one that's going to be impacted okay um, yeah, I, I don't know the exact details in terms of that, but I can't, I mean, do you think that there will, I mean, I'll put the question back on you, do you think there'll be a shift, a significant shift that we'll see in the UK market? Yes, I think we'll okay, I think that's something that we could kind of uh, keep an eye on and maybe produce a report in summer. When does the regulation come into play? Is it six months or? Uh, well, they've, I think they've sort of announced a draft yeah. uh, of stuff that's been out, so I guess it's sometime fairly soon. Yeah, um, certainly there was, you know, you can't compare this to the stuff that happened in the UK. I'm sure it happened worldwide around premium rate text messaging and stuff like that, where ringtones were taking a pound fifty every day for a week. Uh, I don't think you can compare it to that. Um, but m you're right. Maybe sort of government regulation will will have an impact. Is anybody else bummed that they're not going to get to see uh, Chris chop his airbook in half? You got a piece of wood. Yeah, yeah. By show of hands. Maybe next time, next year. Thank you so much, Chris. Thank you.